So our goal is to reconstruct from the DICOM files the anatomical we collected in the scanner. To do this we want to use the project wizard and from the project wizard we want to select the option to create a VMR project. Here we want to choose the DICOM file format and for the project name we want to start with the subject ID followed by an abbreviation for anatomical. When we browse to the folder that contains the DICOMs we can select any of these files and from here Brain Voyager will open a window showing the scans that are contained within that folder. Here we can see a 3 volume EMR, a 192 volume VMR and a 252 volume FMR. So we want to select the 192 VMR. And from here, from the DICOM header, Brain Voyager will read in all the information it needs to know to reconstruct the project. From here we can select Next and Brain Voyager will start reconstructing the VMR. When this is done, we can click OK to accept the default brightness and contrast, and also close the information pane. So what we ultimately want to do is to display data on an inflated cortical mesh, the mesh being a representation of the boundary between the white matter and grey matter. To do this, Brain Voyager needs to know what is and what isn't white matter and grey matter. We can help Brain Voyager by correcting for inhomogeneities that exist in the intensity values of the white matter and the grey matter. You can see what these inhomogeneities look like if you scroll through the brain. You can see particularly in the white matter that the front of the brain looks much darker than the middle and the back. And also the top of the brain is much darker than the middle and the bottom of the brain. The goal then becomes to reduce the range of values that white matter can take and also to reduce the range of values grey matter can take. To do this then we go to volumes and inhomogeneity correction, V16 tools. And what we're looking for is the auto IIHC go button in the top right hand corner. This algorithm will do two things for us. The first thing it will do would be to strip the skull from the brain. The second thing it will do is to correct for those inhomogeneities in the grey and white matter. You can see from a quick scroll through the brain that the range of intensity values that white matter take is more homogeneous, as are the range of intensity values for grey matter. You can also see this represented on the histogram to the far right. There's a peak for the grey matter on the left and a peak for the white matter on the right, and then a local minimum between the two which Brain Voyager can use to define what is grey matter and what is white matter. The next step is to convert our brain from anatomical space into ACPC space. To do this we want to go to our 3D volume tools and click on the Talarac tab. And this is a process we want to do manually so we know that we get it correct. So if we switch to manual mode, the first step is to define the AC point or the anterior commissure. To identify the anterior commissure, if you use the sagittal window, identify the corpus callosum, follow the fornix downwards, you will find the anterior commissure. If we click on this point with our mouse cursor and turn our attention to the transverse window, you can see that the cursor is now on a little bridge that divides the two hemispheres, almost creating a U-shape as it transverses through the brain. Our job then becomes to use the up and down arrow keys to find the transverse slice where this bridge is at its most well defined. The next step is to define the ACPC plane. This is a rotational exercise in the X, Y and Z coordinates, where changes in the X rotation will pivot the brain in the sagittal window, changes in the Y rotation will pivot the brain in the coronal window, and changes in the Z rotation will pivot the brain in the transverse window. The goal here is to make changes in the X rotation and find the point at which the posterior commissure first bridges and becomes well defined. Finally, we can make changes to the Y and Z rotations such that the brain is symmetrical about the horizontal and vertical axes in the respective windows. Once we are happy with our corrections, we can transform the brain to ACPC space. When this is complete, the next step is to identify the landmarks which will allow us to transform the brain from ECPC space to Talarac space. These landmarks are a number of points around the brain defining the brain's boundaries. The AC point is already well defined, so the first point we have to define is the PC point. Using shift and the down arrow, we can move the cursor until it rests on the bridge defining the posterior commissure. The next point is the AP point, or the anterior point. This is the first slice in the coronal window where the cortex becomes visible. We can find this point by holding in shift and using the up and down arrow keys. The next point is the posterior point, 
and this is the slice in the corona window where the brain first becomes visible at the back of the brain. The next two points are the superior and inferior points. The inferior point being the most difficult to identify due to parts of the brain that skull stripping failed to remove. The final two points are the rightmost point in the sagittal window in which cortex is visible and also the leftmost point in the sagittal window in which cortex is visible. Once we are happy with our landmark points, we can save them. And finally we can transform our brain from AC-PC space into Talarac space.